Hey guys, salam alaikum. Welcome back. It's your girl Candace. If you are new here and you've never seen me, my name is Candace. I go by the blonde Muslim on social media. I've got TikTok, Instagram, YouTube. Um, I converted to Islam a few years ago. I taught myself I'm the only Muslim in my family. I was starving for friends and a sense of belonging. So I started putting out videos, trying to make friends. Now I just have so many online. So if you're here, you need love and support, or you're just curious, you want to know what I'm talking about, welcome. Make sure you subscribe. Make sure you uh, like the video for me, please. And I want to let you know that I do one-on-one -on -one coaching. I'm taking appointments. I have the link in my bio. You can click, you can make um, your own appointment, whether it's a half hour or an hour, whether you are just have questions about Islam, whether you want to do your Shahada, you want to become Muslim, maybe you're a new Muslim and you're dealing with a lot of um, emotional, social, psychological issues, or whether you're a born Muslim, we can all relate. I'm here to add value however I can. I'm here to serve and help. Like I said, click the link in my bio. You can make an appointment directly. My calendar's there. I look forward to connecting with you guys and uh, growing together, inshallah. So today's video is an extension of the other one. So if you haven't seen it yet, um, one of my clients asked what she can do to prepare for spending the summer with her family. She reverted to Islam, mashallah, five weeks ago, and she lives in another country, and she is going to be coming to stay with her Christian parents this summer. She's nervous about um, spending time because she told her mom she was Muslim. Her mom hasn't acknowledged it or spoke about it since, and she is afraid that there's going to be issues when she gets home, when she doesn't know if they're going to ask questions, what she can do to like literally talk to them about it and what she should do. So the other video is on how you can kind of prepare emotionally, some of the mindsets you can have, um, and to go over them real quickly is just to love and accept yourself. To remember that none of the prophets asked for guidance, they got it and they fought hard for it even when everybody thought they were crazy. Um, it is to learn about Islam, educate yourself, keep growing, don't grow overnight, roses don't grow overnight, plants don't bloom overnight. You have to let the little seed grow strong and tall before you've got these deep roots and flowers and produce on the tree. Um, your family's probably afraid because they've been miseducated, misinformed. Uh, the narratives of society are completely opposite of Islam. Um, my opinion is that they are brainwashing us to get control and people who have the light of Islam can't be controlled. MashaAllah, SubhanAllah, Alhamdulillah. And people who don't accept you, that's fine. It's their problem. It's their personal problem. It's not you. Get your identity from yourself. Work on yourself, love yourself. Um, and. One of the other big things I talked about in the other, other video I'm referring to is you do not ever want to fight with someone about becoming Muslim. You don't want to fight with people about Islam. You don't want to hurt feelings. You don't want to leave bad vibes. The number one thing you can do is think about your audience and find, figure out what they believe, figure out a way to get in there so that you can be friends. You don't want to be thinking your adversaries. You want to feel like we're both in this. We both believe the same things. So one of the biggest tools you can do, especially if you're Christian, is to tell your family, yeah, I'm still Christian. I'm basically still Christian, but I also believe in Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Now, for me as a Christian, I didn't believe Jesus, uh, peace be upon him, was God. Astaghfirullah. I literally thought he was a guy and I thought God was God. Now, some Christians do believe in the Trinity. So if they do believe in the Trinity, obviously they're having a fundamental misconception of what it even is to be Christian because Jesus never said he prays to himself. Jesus never said, I'm doing this. He said, I'm nothing without God. And when Jesus actually prayed, the Bible says he got on his hands and face, he prostrated. That for me as a Christian was like, what the heck? Christians pray like Muslims, but Christians don't even pray like Christians are supposed to. Christians don't even pray like Jesus did. Subhanallah. And I was like, that is so weird. I was like, that is so weird. Jesus's mom, Mary, was revered because she had never been touched by a man. Why are Christians having boyfriends and sleeping and having children out of wedlock if Jesus's mom, like, I was like, this is really... This is suspicious, this is weird. So like obviously you have to gain like an understanding of the faith, un learn real Christianity, learn real Islam, and realize that these are closer. They are not identical, but in theory, um, every prophet that was chosen by God came with the same message. So the prophets in theory should all be friends and they should all be of the same caliber and same belief and same goals, right? I like to think about them. They all would have been friends. 
They all had the same goal. They would have been a team, right? So once you learn real Christian, real Christianity, once you realize that over time, every time God picked a prophet, there were people who believed and went with it and supported it. Um, and then there were people who were against it. And there was also a third group of people who said they believed, but they didn't. And they were basically like spies who were standing with the Christians or standing with whoever, um, standing with the most, standing with the believers. We'll say believers. We're not going to use words, right, to identify this versus that. They would stand with the believers and say they believed, but in secret, they would say, I don't believe. And they would do what they could to literally be inside the faith, manipulate it, and twist it um, to get the believers off track. Now, whether it's just shaitan or the devil, um, it's actually like really crazy. And there's the word in Arabic is munafiq. So it's like the people who said they believed. It's in the Quran, look it up. Um, and they would say words that were similar to say like, it's, it's like in the footnotes of my Quran, like there was a word that they would say, but it sounded similar to this other word, but it was really a disrespectful word, but it was disguised as a positive word. So this happened in Christianity. A lot of the Bible was twisted. A lot of it's warped. Um, for me as a former Christian, once I learned all of this, I got all these little tools so that I could navigate these situations better talking to people of specifically Christians or so against Islam. So this video, I'm going to give you some food for thought that inshallah you're going to be able to use when you're talking to your parents, you're talking to whoever, and if they're Christians specifically, um, so that you can kind of get, the goal is not to fight and to defend yourself. The goal is to get unity that you guys are on the same team. You guys both believe in God. You believe in the same prophets and get them to see real Christianity and to not fight you. So, all right. So some of the things are like, for me, I said, I go, I didn't know until I researched that Jesus isn't God. I didn't know that Jesus prayed on his, dropped on his face and prostrate. I didn't know that Jesus in the Bible actually says, don't worship me, I'm nothing without my creator. And to be able to say something like that and then they have to think about it and then you go, what do you think of that? Hey, what do you think of the first commandment that says, um, do not take associate associates? And I didn't realize until I did some research and you have to say things like this. I love the Bible and I think it's great because there's so much information that brings me closer to God. But the difference is that a lot of people manipulated it and twisted it over time. And I think that there's a lot of conflicting information and that confuses me. So in my research, I, when I found out about Islam, you can insert whatever it is. Um, and I realized, you know, you remember how God talked directly to Moses? Well, God talked directly to Muhammad, peace be upon him. And the Quran, the difference between the Bible and the Quran is the Bible is a bunch of he said, she said, I saw Jesus, he did this. I heard this about this. This is how so-and-so did this. And it's a collection of stories. So the difference would be like people who've seen me and interacted writing a book about all of the things Candace did and said in her life, right? Um, and maybe I said I like blue one day to somebody and to another day I said I don't like blue. So, and so maybe in that book there's confusion, there's conflicting, or and, and then you have to leave the human element, perception, things like you know, depending on the person's day, what they heard, the brain can perceive something that never happened. So somebody could literally see something and think it happened without a doubt. And subhanAllah, the way the perception is, you don't really know. That's why they say there's his, her side, his side, and then the truth. Um, there's three sides to everything. So, and then I would say something like, but once I started researching, well, what is the Quran? Well, just how God talked to Moses, peace be upon him. God talked to Muhammad, peace be upon him. And okay, so the Quran is really crazy when I started researching it. There's all these numerical things and like, you know, there's really crazy like scientific information in it that is so weird. They could have known all of this stuff because it was revealed like 1600 years ago and there's things in it about like, they didn't have science, they didn't have microscopes, they didn't have the ability to fly, they didn't have the ability to go deep inside the ocean. Um, and it's like so crazy when you research the Quran um, to know that like, wow, how could, how could hypothetically, let's say hypothetically Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam wrote the Quran? Because you're, you're gonna be talking to somebody who doesn't know what they're talking about. 
how could he know the way the clouds are formed in the sky? Almost 2,000 years ago, they didn't have airplanes. And the Quran says that the clouds, when it rains, the clouds stack. They stack and then the rain comes through it and drops. That's literally how rain happens. How could Muhammad, peace be upon him, have known that? He couldn't fly. Okay, well, science also has recently discovered that there's underwater waves. Super, super, super deep in the ocean, there's actually waves underneath there. How could Muhammad, peace be upon him, have known? He, he didn't have equipment to go down that deep. This is modern times, it's really crazy. Well, the Quran also says that um, the embryo is formed in three stages and that the, the sperm and the, the egg and it becomes tissue and then it becomes a blood clot and then it attaches and then it forms in three stages in the womb. Like, they didn't have science. They didn't have the microscope. How could they have known that? Um, and then you have to say, you know, Muhammad, peace be upon him, was illiterate. He couldn't read and write. Um, the, the nuances of the Quran, specific words are said twice as much as others. One thing for me is the chapter of the bees, which I thought was really crazy because I think it is chapter, is it 16 or 18? Hmm. Let me get my Quran and look. Hold on. Okay, I'm back. So the bees is 16. Okay, so the bee is chapter 16 and it is written in female tense. Now in modern times, science has discovered that it is the female bees that are important. They're the queen bees and then you have all the drone bees. Now it's chapter 16, it's written in female. They're talking about, God's talking about honey and then bees have 16 chromosomes or 16 sets of chromosomes, whether it's the queen bee, whether it's a female or a male. So it's like, there's so many little nuances. The more you know, the more you're like, wow, this is so crazy. Um, so maybe research some of those things so that you have a repertoire to be able to bring these into conversations. The other thing I'll say is like, they want to do, is it the Bible or the Quran? Which is right? Why did, did, do we have to pick between Moses and Jesus? Do we ever pick between them unless it's a matter of Jews and Christians? Does a Christian ever say whether Moses is real or Noah was real or Jesus was real? No. Now you have to say, God picked prophets to come over time because we get off track. And he sent so many over time. And in the Bible, it actually says that Jesus, there's going to be somebody else to come. I have an amazing article on this. Um, I will link it in the caption so you can read it. And it's about basically, instead of seeing Jesus and Muhammad, peace be upon them, as rivals, we should see them as brothers and friends for the same cause. Now, I think that's part of society's narrative is to do that so that we're all fighting about this or this instead of like unifying because if we all had the right message and like got together, we'd be so powerful. So you just have to ask your parents questions like, well, like if, if the Bible says that, then like who do you think is next? Who do you think is the final? Now they'll go to their Bible in English, like right here I have a Quran in English. They'll go to it and they'll be like, it doesn't say Muhammad right here. But if you get a Bible in the correct language, it says the word Ahmad. Ahmad is a variation of the word Muhammad. Ahmad, Muhammad. And so like I posted a video and everybody went to their English Bible and they're like, you're lying. And I'm like, dude, you've got to go to the native languages of these things in order to see these things. And you know, you can, say well and you always want to say like not fight and defend and you go well like let's say your parents say like well why did you decide to become muslim well i did some research because i was confused and i was like really shocked to find out i wasn't practicing christianity the right way like i didn't realize i wasn't supposed to drink and you know have a boyfriend and dress like that and i didn't realize i wasn't supposed to eat pork i didn't realize the first commandment says don't associate anyone else with god and i was confused because i found out that Muslims believe in Jesus and Moses and I love them and how do they believe and so like in my research it was really crazy because I feel like I became a better Christian and this is my actual story I feel like I became a better Christian and when I became a better Christian I started thinking like okay I should do these things and then I started like well then what's the difference between Christianity and Islam okay so that's when I started researching and I found out that Muslim is an Arabic word that just means the one who submits to the will of God. So even as a, as a Christian, and I believe in God, and I don't think Jesus is God, okay? I still am a Muslim because I believe in the, I submit to the will of God, right? So that's just an Arabic word to describe that. Islam is submission to the will of God. Okay, so that's not so terrible. 
And the, I would say something like, the more I learned, the more it brought me closer to Christianity, the better Christian I became. Once I learned these things, I feel like the Quran helped me to really understand Christianity because it actually was straight from God. There is nothing manipulated about it. It's like so perfect. It's got all this science. It's helped me to understand like the end of times. A lot of Christians don't understand the end of times. They don't understand that it's going to come to an end and that we believe in the same things. And, you know, I started asking my mom questions like this, like, like things like, well, do you know who Gabriel is? And she's like, no. And I'm like, Archangel Gabriel, do you know what he does? Do you know what he did? Okay, do you know how big he is? Like, and so I've gotten so much more education out of being like Muslim for Christianity. So anyways, so to continue the dialogue, I would say something like, yeah. And so then like, you know, I thought about, well, what would Jesus have done if he heard Muhammad's message, peace be upon them? Would he think it's the same? Was it different? No. And I did some research. It was so crazy. They actually think the same things like real Christianity and real Islam is the same thing. And it's like really crazy because everybody's fighting about this or this, but they both came to say there's one God. And I'm so confused why Christians think that Jesus is God because Jesus never said he's God. So I just kind of frame things like that. And then I just try and put it as like, I don't care if you call me a ninja turtle who believes in God and all of his prophets, peace be upon them. I don't care if you call me a Christian that believes in Muhammad, peace be upon him. I don't care what label, but for me, I like the word Muslim because it means that I submit to the will of God. I like that. And that's all that means. Because then what you're doing is you're breaking down, you're breaking down their paradigms. And trust me, this is not gonna be a one conversation thing unless your parent is really open-minded and they're just like, I wanna understand you, honey. Like, what does it all mean? The biggest thing is like, when you go to tell somebody you're Muslim, it's like, what, it, what do you even say? It's so comprehensive and such a way of life. There's so much knowledge in it um, that when somebody says, well, what does it be to, to what does it mean to be a Muslim? Well, it means you believe in one God only. He created the seen and unseen, everything. He's the owner of us, the judgment and this life and that next. Um, and then you believe in all of the prophets and Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. That's what it means. That's the foundation of being Muslim. All of the actions and everything are really great. Yeah, so it's given me a way to connect with God more and I connect with him five times a day and you know, like all of this, it's like you really have to like just play, you really have to be smarter than them. And like I said, you have to know your audience. So if your mom um, eats bacon or she drinks alcohol or she does this or she thinks Jesus is God, stuff or lot, then like you need to like ask her questions to think about how she thinks. So instead of feeling like they're attacking you, ask them questions about what they think, but not in like a, a rude or insulting way. Like I said, you do what I said and you go, yeah, I never realized that Jesus wasn't God and that he never said that until I started doing research. And then I read the first commandment and that's like the biggest sin is to associate anyone with God. So like, what do you think, mom? Like, what do you think of that? Did you know? And a lot of times if you say like, did you know? They're like, I didn't know. I mean, but the thing is, is like, are they going to take the step to educate themselves and learn? You know, and so for me, having been Muslim for like five years, I've been having these conversations over and over and over. And it doesn't always stick the first time. You have to think of them like children. Like you're going to tell a child to not do that 8,000 times. And then, you know, inshallah, maybe one day they're going to be like, oh, well, I want a Quran. I want to learn more. Don't come off as pushy. Don't come off as judgmental. Don't come off as argumentative. Be sweet. Be nice. Ask questions back and try and do what you can to get them to question themselves and think what they think. To see that they're pro probably not practicing Christianity the right way. Do what you can to assimilate. Oh yeah, I found out. Yeah, no, it's like, it's like the same thing. It's the same message as God. The, the, the most important clarification that Muhammad did, peace be upon him, was that, that God is God and the prophets are not. The Trinity is not a real thing. The Trinity actually was never mentioned anywhere until the Quran. And it was like, that is wrong. Do not believe in the Trinity. I didn't know that. And just use it and say like, Islam is, a, and I mean, obviously this is me and what I went through. Just use it to say, it's brought me so much closer to God. It's brought me, it's made me feel like I understand the stories of the Bible. And since the Bible was so many stories from he said, she said, like the Quran is just so clear. There's no flaws in it. It's so cool. 
I really love it. And you know, the more confident you are, it's like, like I said, and if they have a problem, they have a problem. Like I said, <coughs> excuse me, several of my family members disowned me, my, my friends did. It hurt, I was so sensitive, I was so vulnerable, I was so like, oh, who am I, nobody likes me. But now, I'm like, what do I care? If you don't like me, you don't, it sounds like you have an issue. So try and drill that through your head, accept yourself, believe in what you believe in, and then, you know, those are, I think I've mentioned like a lot of the main points for, you know, the science in the Quran, what the word Muslim means, um, that Muhammad and Jesus, peace be upon them both, were, would have been friends, they had the same message, um, that you're using Islam to understand Christianity, that God always sent the prophets, and those are what helped me. Ask them questions about what they think. Why are you so afraid? Why this? Like, I like it. You know, I just do want to take a moment to validate you and tell you if you're in this situation, you're going through these conversations with your parents, remember you will be having these conversations with people your whole life. If God has chosen you and put you on this path, then you are lucky. You are blessed. And the coolest thing I read in a book was like, in a day and age where it's like new and improvement and progression and progression, progressive, progressiveness, practicing Islam, it has not changed over like 1,600, almost 1,700 years. It has not changed. And by learning it and by practicing it, even if you're a regular white girl like me or you're from wherever, you literally are protecting and preserving Islam. We're doing the same things that the Prophet, peace be upon him, did. Like, I drink with my right hand. I put my right shoe on first. Like... I say bismillah before I eat, like all these little things, we are perpetuating it. We're keeping it alive in the world. And without people like you and me being new to it and coming to it, you know, it's not gonna keep growing. So just keep going, keep doing it. I know it's hard. It sucks to be the only one in your family. It sucks to be misunderstood. It sucks to be judged. It sucks. It's hard. It sucks to learn these things. It sucks to pray on your own, but this is an amazing blessing. And I can tell you after about five years of doing it on my own, I am at the point where I'm like, I realize it's just a part of me. I don't have to change who I am. It's just a part of me. It's my beliefs. It's a beautiful way of life. I don't need anybody else to practice this. I don't need anybody's approval. And I know when I die, I'm gonna have my judgment. I know God loves me if he puts me here. I know he's with me. I know he gives me hardship. I know he tests me. I know he takes things away from me. I know he gives things to me. I know he is like the thing. I know he is the thing that keeps my heart beating when I'm asleep. He is the thing, the, the, the thing that I'm gonna go back to when I die. So just try and remember that. Try not to take it so seriously. Try not to let people's judgments have so much weight on you. You're doing a good job and if you've made it to the end of this video and you still need extra help or you want somebody to talk to or you wanna talk about your personal journey, your personal struggles, like I said, click the link in my bio, go make an appointment, we can chat on the phone or you can submit a question. But I hope that some of these tips and tricks help you, inshallah. Um, if you have any more, put them in the comments. Let me know what else you need help with. Um, we're here to do this together, guys. You are not alone. You can do it. You're amazing. You're beautiful just the way you are. Keep growing. Keep glowing. Keep trying for the sake of Allah. Um, that's it for today. I will talk to you guys soon. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I love you.